guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing five 10 minute meals with you all. If you're anything like me, I feel like I'm constantly in the kitchen at the moment with the kids at home and me homeschooling. I feel like they're constantly having breakfast, lunch, dinner and snacks. So if I can get a meal that's quick and easy to make, then it's my favorite. So I wanted to share five meals that I've cooked this week that are all 10 minute meals with you all and hopefully you will enjoy them. If you watch me for the first time and you're new to my channel, I would love for you to subscribe. I post loads of different foodie videos on my channel. So if that's the kind of thing that you enjoy watching, then I would love for you to press that red button down below. Also over on my Instagram, I post loads of different foodie content as well. So I'll link that in my description box and feel free to go and give me a follow over there as well. So I'm going to start off with today's um, evening meal and I'm going to be making a chicken teriyaki so there's with the rice there's two different ways you can do it you can obviously just buy rice like this and this takes about 20 minutes to make or you can buy a packet rice like this which is obviously a lot quicker and easier but this is more expensive and buying it this way is cheaper so it's totally up to you if you're gonna make rice like this it will make this meal like a 20 minute meal purely because of the rice um, so it's completely up to you how you want to do it. You can also serve this meal with noodles or couscous. Couscous is a really, really quick one to do as well. You just add some boiling water to it. But I am going to be serving mine today with some rice. So I'm going to turn the camera around and show the ingredients you need. And then I'm going to take you through my week and um, talk you through all the different meals that we will be having this week. And I'll show you each one. I'll list all the ingredients down below in my description box. So um, if you fancy trying any of them, you can just come back to this video and you can see what ingredients you need really quickly and easily. One thing I quickly wanted to say before we get into this video is that if you want to save time cooking, I would highly recommend getting an onion dicer. You will see throughout this video that I use it pretty much in every single meal I um, make. And now, for example, when I'm about to make my um, chicken teriyaki, I just put in like all onions, garlic, ginger, everything like that into my onion dicer, blitz it up. It's an electric one, so it's so easy to use and it just saves so much time. So it's definitely something I would recommend you investing in. Um, they're not expensive. They're about 25 to 30 pounds to get a good one, but it's well worth the money. Anyway, I'm going to show you what I'm going to be making now with the chicken teriyaki. Okay, so here are all the ingredients for my chicken teriyaki. These are the rices that I wanted to show you. I've got couscous, I've got rice, and I've just got normal rice. Like I said, these are more expensive to use, but it's totally up to you. Um, whatever you've got more time for. If you've got time to make your own rice, then... Um, works out so much cheaper. So I've got some chicken here. These are just kind of like mini chicken um, fillets that I'm using, some rice, soy sauce, sesame oil. I've got some broccoli, some garlic, ginger, and a vegetable stock cube as well. So the first thing I'll start off by doing is browning off my chicken fillets. So I'll add some sesame oil to the pan and then it just brown off and cook through my chicken fillets. While those are cooking, I will mix up my um, sauce, my teriyaki sauce. So I'll use a nub of ginger, three cloves of garlic, the vegetable stock cube, some sesame oil and some soy sauce. I will also add in about 300 mils of water as well. Once my chicken's been cooked, I will then add in my teriyaki sauce along with my broccoli. And I'll just put a lid on the pan so that everything can kind of steam through and the broccoli can cook. Obviously I will have cooked my rice or used a packet rice as well. Once your broccoli has been cooking for a couple of minutes but it's still got a little bite to it, you're then ready to serve up. Right, so for dinner tonight we're having something really simple. We had a sort of bigger lunch, so we decided none of us are actually that hungry to have a proper meal. So we're going to be having, like I said, something really simple. We're having a fully loaded omelette. So um, I sometimes think that you, when it comes to dinner times, you feel you have to make a proper, proper meal. But this meal is going to have still loads and loads of proteins, loads of healthiness in it. And also, if you've got any leftovers in the fridge, it's a great way to use them up. So in our omelette, we are going to be having some onion and some peppers. Um, we're also going to have some ham as well and a little bit of cheese, obviously. Um, but the boys will be using two eggs in each of their omelettes. And to make it even quicker, I use two big pans and I do the boys' omelettes in one and then mine and Chris's omelette in the other. Chris and I will sometimes have some um, little, I don't know, some cane 
cayenne pepper in there or something like that but it's a really really quick and easy meal and it's really versatile too you can serve it next to salad if you're trying to be a little bit healthy or if you want to have some toast with it um, you can do right so here are the different ingredients I'm going to use for our omelettes today so I have got some eggs I've got um, ham pepper onion cheese and baby spinach so I'll probably just use the spinach in uh, mine and Chris's omelette so I'll use four eggs for the boys and six eggs for Chris and I so what I'll start off by doing is finely dicing up my onion but I'll only do half of this because otherwise it'd be a bit too oniony so I'll do half an onion and then I'll also cut up my pepper into little cubes and I'll just saute those off first um, I'll then take out half of the mixture and put it in one pan and I'll keep the other half in the other pan for each of the two sets of omelettes um, and then I will beat up the eggs so like I said I'll do four for the boys and six for Chris and I I'll beat them up and then add them to each pan along with some baby spinach for Chris and I and some ham and some grated cheese as well let it all cook away and then serve it up if you want to you can serve this with some toast I know Chris and the boys probably will have some toast but I'll just have it as it is and it's really really filling so for tonight's dinner we are having a prawn and chorizo spaghetti pasta we make this in a tomato -y sauce but to be honest with you we kind of like change the way we make this every single time we do sometimes we have it with a bit of a spicy sauce but today because the kids are going to eat this we're not going to have it with the spicy sauce so because you're cooking with chorizo I always fry that off first and like get it nice and crispy and that will also release loads of its um, yummy oils and things you want to keep those oils in there so you don't need to add any other oil to this dish dish and then you can continue to make up your um, sauce for this with the prawns because I buy ones that are already cooked you just literally chuck them in with a couple of minutes to go just to warm them through and then you're ready but I'm going to turn the camera around now and show you all the different ingredients that I've got and how you need to make this meal. So this is everything you need. So we've got some chorizo, some cooked prawns, some spaghetti pasta, and then I use one tin of chopped tomatoes. I am using the other half of the onion that I um, didn't use when I cooked my chicken teriyaki. I'm going to use three cloves of garlic and then a little bit of soft cheese as well. You can use creme fraiche if you want. You can use cream, whatever you've got in your um, fridge, or you can just leave that out completely, completely up to you. So what you want to do, first of all, is get your pasta on the go, because that's the bit that takes the longest. You then want to dice your chorizo up into little cubes and fry that off in a separate pan. Like I said, that's going to release loads of its own oils, so you want to keep all of those in, unless you want to be really good and you can spoon some of them out, but we just think it adds so much flavor to this dish, and that's why I don't use a cube as well once you fried off your chorizo I then remove it um, from the pan so I can fry off my onion and my garlic once I've sauteed my onion and garlic I add in my chopped tomatoes and some of my soft cheese I then go ahead and add back in my chorizo and finally the cooked prawns just a couple of minutes before I'm ready to serve once my pasta's ready, I then just add that into my sauce and mix everything up together so the pasta is fully coated in all those yummy flavors. And then I just dish up with a little bit of Parmesan cheese on top. Right, so for this meal, we're going to be doing a garlic lemon tuna pasta. It's really quick and easy. It's also relatively inexpensive as well. So what you're going to need for this is some pasta. You're going to need two lots of tuna. So I do one um, tin of tuna per person. You need um, a lemon, probably I'll use about half of that lemon, three cloves of garlic, some really good olive oil, and then I've got some Parmesan cheese to put on top. So what I'll start off by doing is boiling up my pasta and cooking that through. And then in a separate pan, I'm going to combine um, some olive oil, my crushed up garlic, two tins of tuna and half the lemon juice. And I'm just going to just kind of on a moderate heat fry that off so I'm not like cooking it through, I'm just warming it through so all those yummy flavors can infuse together. And then once the pasta's cooked, I'll add it into my tuna mix and then I will just top it off with some Parmesan at the end. You can also add some parsley if you want to. Um, Chris and the kids aren't that keen on parsley so I won't add that, but I might add some on my dish actually. Um, but yeah, like I said, really quick, easy and relatively cheap too. Right, so for tonight's dinner, we are having some quesadillas. We are going to be having some mince and bean quesadillas today. They're really, really easy to make and also very, very versatile as well. We often have this with... Um, 
turkey strips or chicken strips or even just plain veggies like peppers and things like that it's really delicious but today like I said we are having mints and bean ones so I wanted to show you these um, mixed taco beans that I buy I get these from Tesco's they are mixed taco beans in a spicy tomato sauce so if I ever do like a five bean um, chili I will use these and because they come in the spicy tomato sauce it's not too spicy but this sauce just adds so much flavor to any meal so I'm going to add these into my quesadillas today into my mince mix and it just makes it really really tasty so I'm going to show you the ingredients I need and then I'll tell you the steps that we will take to make this meal so these are what I'll be using for tonight's dinner but also I'll be serving with some salad on the side as well so I just haven't shown you that bit but I'll be um, using some beef mince one beef stock taco mixed beans and they come in like a spicy tomato sauce um, I'll also use one onion, some garlic, some cheese and of course some wraps as well. So the first thing that I'll start off by doing is frying off my onion and garlic to saute those off and then I'll add in my beef mince and brown that off. Once my beef mince has browned off I will add in my taco beans, also my um, beef stock and then I'll just let that simmer away for a couple of moments so all the nice flavours can kind of infuse into each other. Once that has simmered for a little bit I will then get another frying pan out and then I will lay in one of my tortilla wraps and then I will spoon in some of the beef mixture as well as some grated cheese on top and then I will fold it in half. When I do this I make sure that I put enough cheese around the edges so that I can kind of stick the edges together so that all the contents doesn't come out. So you don't want to fill your wrap up too much. We probably have about two wraps each and then that way we kind of um, have enough filling in the two wraps that would kind of be like one big chunky wrap. But yeah, so you don't want to fill it up too much or, or your filling will come out when you try to cut it. And like I said, we'll just serve it on the side with some salad as well. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, I will link all the details down below in my description box and I will see you guys again next time. Thanks so much. Bye.